that's right. We are right here at Sharp Facets Gallery. It is time for Meet Me at the Diner. And yes, who is my special guest today? It is Chastity Chic. How are you doing today, Chastity? I'm doing well. I hope you are. Very good, very good. You're looking very spiffy today. You've been in court today. I have been in court. I have. It yes. is uh, not for yourself, I hope. Oh, no. No, not of, no, of course not. Because of your job, right? <laughs> That's right, yes. Well, and you are my job with yeah. the clerk's office. Yep, yeah. and you are running for clerk of court. So, uh, uh, and gosh, I guess last week was general sessions court, wasn't it? It was our first week of general sessions, yes, and this is our second week. Mm -hmm. Kind of a tough time for uh, general sessions to come along, isn't it, it? It is. It is, because I have to maintain court and, and run in the... The campaign. The campaign, so. <laughs> yeah. Now, the, of course, the election was last Tuesday, and gosh, it was a tight race for the clerk of court. Just 51 votes separated the two of you. That's uh, that's pretty close. That is pretty close. That is. And, of course, you did come out on top. You were, you were on top there with uh, 2,884 votes, and uh, Angie had uh, 2,831. And Jane had 1,276 votes, so uh, that's a pretty good turnout when you consider mm -hmm. uh, everybody voting for, for that office. But uh, you have a runoff coming up next Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Tuesday the 26th, I do. How did you, are you, will you be glad when all this campaigning's over? Uh, honestly, I will be glad. <laughs> yes, I will be glad. Because you've got election, you've got to uh, work in the general sessions this, and then you told me you've got uh, stumps and, and town hall meetings that you're yes, going to yes, every I night. Have, I have meetings set up every night this week. I have meet and greets two nights this week. You know, I've been, you know, meeting a lot of new people in different neighborhoods, so I, I have been very, very busy, along with my job. And in the clerk of court's office, exactly. <laughs> I have to maintain that also. Exactly. Well, that's that's great. Now, of course, you know one of the things that broke last Monday, a week ago today, actually, was the story about the uh, signs being run over. Yes, the infamous sign. And and you know what can you what can you tell us about it? Well, first of all, let me st let me say that I was not there. I, I was not there to see any of it. I have um, people working for me, as does the other candidate candidates um, and and they were there and they I was told they saw what happened they spoke with the, the individuals that that um that assumably did <laughs> I'm trying you know purportedly that, that maybe reportedly maybe. you know did that I know that um, pictures were made um, they do have allegedly a, there, allegedly there's that's the word, the word. I should know that word I hear that <laughs> enough um, allegedly did that I know pictures like I said were made and um, you know a courtesy summons was issued but you know, I was not there. I cannot say that I saw it with my own eyes. You know, I, I don't have time right now to deal with that. You know, I'm more focused on the campaign, more important issues, you know, as far as getting out and meeting people and getting out in the different, you know, in Wershoals and 96 and the, the town hall meetings I'm going to. You know, that's just not something that is important to me right now. Um, I, I feel like that it, is, isn't a, it needs to be addressed if it was, if it was committed. You know, it needs to be addressed. That's not something that you know, the um, politics in Greenwood that needs to go on in Greenwood. I mean, it's just right is right and wrong is wrong, you know. And, and if everyone can lay their head on the pill at night, knowing that they've done the best they can and, and handle each situation like they should and acted as grown adults, then that's what I want to happen. But that's mainly what I, I, I want for myself. Every night I want to be able to say I've done the best I can do. I've treated everybody the best I can. And, you know, I'm not ashamed of anything I've done or said. So... Well, who knew that sign placement could be that important? Be that critical. Yes, that critical. Yes, yes. A critical issue. Critical issue, sign placement. Yes. All I can say is this, though, uh, quite, quite frankly, Chastity, is thank God we don't have as many signs out there as we had. It was cluttering up the landscape it there. It was. I know everybody's. I was tired of seeing my name plastered all over <laughs> Greenwood. And, you know, I know I've, I've heard people talk, well, is she even in the running anymore because I don't see her signs, you know. Well, I did try to take them up and place them at key points for the primary day. Mm -hmm. And I have moved some of them back out now, but not not as many as I had. For one reason, I don't have as many as I had, but, you know, they get torn down. They get lost. That happens with every candidate and every sure. race. So, you know, I just I don't want Greenwood to be bombarded with my name. You know, a sign is not going to win this election for me. You know, my, my experience, my, you know, what I, I do in the office every day, that's going to win the election for me. A sign of where it's placed and how many times you see it is not going to win this election for me. So it's not important. 
Well, I had a little ad going, a little PSA. You know, you needed to be, well, people needed to be educated. They needed to not vote by a sign. They needed to vote on the issues. And that's, that's exactly right. What you just a said. A sign there. is not going to win this election that's for true. any one of us. No, any, everybody any that party. votes needs to know. Now, mm -hmm. of course, there'll be, uh, all the precincts will be open. They will. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, if you voted last week, you'll be able to vote next week in this, and this will be the only election on the uh, on the board. Yep. Even if you did not vote last week, you can vote this week. The only way you cannot vote in the runoff is if you voted in the Democratic primary. Okay. So you, if you didn't vote at all, or you know you voted, you can you can vote in the runoff on Tuesday, the twenty sixth. Okay. And then, but if you did vote in the Democratic primary, you then you cannot. You cannot. Okay. All right. Well, just a few little housekeeping things so that everybody knows where you stand, where one stands on this. So, uh, if you did vote in the Democratic, you cannot vote. If you just didn't vote, or if you did vote, you still can vote next Tuesday. I presume the uh, polls will be open seven to seven. Seven to seven. Yes, just like yeah. a regular yeah. primary day election. Day. That's expensive. That is, is expensive. expensive. That I is mean, expensive for the for our county mm -hmm. to have it to is. do this. It yeah, is. it is expensive. But according to the rules, you have to get, what, 50% plus, plus one. Plus one. Right. Mm -hmm. And that really broke down to, uh, you got 41.25%, and let's see, uh, Angie got 40.49, and then Jane got 18.25. So, mm -hmm. so close, but so far. So far. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, you know, there have been a lot of questions about, um, it seems like, in the in the clerk of court uh, office that it seems to be it goes from uh, one person that's been into the office they become the clerk of court when somebody decides to retire then somebody else takes over and here you are at the third round here with the same thing happening you know is it an heir apparent thing that the person that is in the clerk's office should be the clerk of court well, I think that's been a misconception of a lot of people I've, I've heard talk around Greenwood that I'm, I just think I'm heir to the throne or, or, you know, I've heard different phrases of that. And it's not that at all. It is a matter of who has worked towards that position, who has been in that office and who has gotten, gained this experience needed to work that office. You know, it's just like I, I talked to someone the other day and I said, you know, if a sheriff was being elected, you would not elect a sheriff that was walking in off the street that had never had law enforcement experience, had never had any kind of a criminal experience at all, you wouldn't want that. A solicitor, you wouldn't want a solicitor walking in just fresh out of law school that had no knowledge of the courtroom. Well, I feel the same way with the clerk's office. You don't want someone walking in off the street that has no knowledge of how that clerk's office runs, how their daily day-to-day -day, um, operations run, how court runs. Just as I was saying before I came in, I had an issue with a jury in court right before this interview that I had to deal with and, you know, knew how to deal with because I've been there 13 years, the judge and I worked it out and you know that's how we do. Every day I learn something different in that office because of all the different aspects we have in that office, the different areas. And you, you just wouldn't want someone walking in the door and you know stand there, well where do I go now? Where, where, where do you work? Where are these files? I mean you know you, and so it's not an issue of trying to get the next person in because we're a clique or we're it's just who has earned that position, who has learned that position, and, and who wants to, you know, go forward and, and carry on the legacy of the other, the former clerks, you know, where they brought the office to. You know, it's just a matter of experience is what it boils down to and who has worked in that office and who knows that office. Sure, and, and for you, the learning curve, what would the learning curve be for you as far as, I know you work in the general sessions and one side of it, would there be a learning curve on any the parts only, of it? Mm -hmm. The only learning curve that I would say I'd have is in family court and child support. I want to know as much as I can over there. I, I've not been able to go, as we say, to the other side of the office because I mainly work in civil court, general sessions, you know, real estate. I handle all that. So, you know, along with the other ladies in the office, our other employers, employees. Um, so I'm familiar with all that, but as far as child support and family court, that would be my first priority is to learn more about that and be familiar with that area. But as far as the learning curve is coming in and working in, in the clerk's office with the, the balancing of reports, with the state reports we have to get out, the checkbooks that we have for each individual account, there would be none. I, I do that on a daily basis. You know, I already know how to do it, where they're at, you know, that they're balanced and you know, I work with our treasurer's office, you know, on a monthly basis to get those reports in. So there'll be no learning curve there at all. You know, everything will stay, you know, right on track. 
absolutely. And I guess the learning curve would just be understanding how everything works over there. It's not that it's really any different. It's no, just I just want to know how they process their payments, how they, you know, how they handle their, their rule to show cause, ruling you know, individuals in with you know, not paying child support. I want to understand their process so I can better that process. I have to understand the basis of it before I can go in and just say, we're going to change all this. You know, that's, not, that's not fair and that's not what I want to do. I want to see what they're doing and then see, you know, how we can make that better and make it easier on them and easier on the, you know, the citizens of Greenwood that are getting child support and paying child support. Sure, and I think in our last interview, we actually talked about some of the possibilities of uh, debit cards and making we this did. thing move quicker for yes. um, more, for more accessible, more, more internet options. You know, be able to, to do things over the internet. Absolutely. Well, we are with Chastity Sheik here today. She is running for clerk of court. She is in a runoff uh, for this position for the Republican side. Now, of course, then there'll be a Democratic challenger. So the challenge goes on, right? The challenge goes on. <laughs> That's After right. we reach this, we'll have another one in November. Exactly. So uh, Chastity's already figuring she's going to come back here in November again. So, uh, okay. hey, we're going to hear a word from our sponsors. We'll be right back. If you've got a question for Chastity, give us a call, 229-7984. That's 229-7984. Oh, that's right. We're right here with Chastity Sheik. She wants to be the next clerk of court, and they have a runoff next Tuesday June 26th. The polls will be open. All the polls will be open from 7 to 7. Uh, the only uh, way you could not vote in it was to have really voted in the Democratic primary. So as long as you either did not vote at all or you voted as a Republican, you would be able to vote in this. And that will be the only thing. There will only be two names on this ballot. Not to, So you got to go out and make a choice. But uh, I highly recommend that everybody go vote again because this has been a tight race and we should make sure that everybody that wants the opportunity to be able to put their voice in it should go out and vote. Make sure you do it next Tuesday and you know I'll be talking about it. You know, I was glad to see that uh, Greenwood was actually one of the higher places, Greenwood County, across the state for voter turnout. Mm -hmm. I think that was great. That was wonderful. That yeah. was good at medicine. Absolutely. So, um, Chastity, um, one of the things, though, that you have to deal with is the budget. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a huge issue right there. Are you prepared to be able to do a budget? I, I am. Um, I have worked with Ingram Moon, our current clerk, on the budget. Um, you know, the beginning parts of it. There's plenty more I could still, you know, I'm going to still learn and, and, you know, be a part of. But the budget is a huge issue that we have to work with county council and our county manager. You know, we all have to come to an agreement. You know, they tell us, we tell them what we want, they tell us what we're going to get. And, you know, then we, we work with what we have to work with in that office. So it takes, you know, the, all of us to work, work it out. But. Now, when will the next budget be done? Right now, um, our, our year will begin July 1st. So right now we're finishing up, you know, the budget. So now we'll have another year that we'll hopefully we, we get this budget approved that we've turned in, that Ingram has turned in, and um, get it approved and we'll have a year to work on that. But sometimes, you know, before the year, year's out, we run out and we have to turn to different avenues to try to make up, you know, the money and the shortfalls. What do you think could be done to, um, I'll use the word, save money, save money in the budget? Has there been any things that you've observed since you've been there that you can say, well, you know, maybe we could cut a little there or cut a little there? Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think? I have seen so many changes since I've been there that have has already cut down so much. I can remember first starting that the real estate and um, the real estate department, when we would get these mortgages and deeds in, we would have to copy every single mortgage and deed that came in and copy it and make a fake book, as we would call it, to have on hand while we mailed out another copy, so we made two sets of copies for this, mailed out to a company that made the books, created the books, and mailed back to us. So the paper we used in that office was horrendous. So now we do that ourselves. We scan the documents in, we print our own books up right then and there, we make our books, and we put them on the shelf. So, you know, that right there has cut the budget tremendously. Now, granted, we, you know, we've had to get the scanners and a new system, but the paper that we used and, and the, the manpower, we would have somebody just stand at a copier for hours copying mortgages and deeds all day long. So that has stopped. So there has been a tremendous amount of change in that office that has cut, cut budget. 
Okay. Is there anything that you look at now as you're looking to get into this office? I mean, you're already working there, but to be the clerk of court, that you have any ideas where you think things might could, or, or do you think it runs pretty efficiently right now? It, it honestly, it runs pretty efficiently. I mean, I'm sure there's always ways that we can, you know, work on things that we do. You know, recycling paper. That's one of our, our issues we're doing now in the office, just amongst us, that we recycle paper. If you use one side of the paper and you don't need it, then turn it over and use the, the other side, side just sure. for whatever you need to print out or to check over real quick. You know, we, we're doing that. And that's a small way, but that's that's a huge way sure. also. You know, and as far as anything else, you know, everything we do are online now. So, you know, the paper, again, has been cut out and, and we're doing everything we can to be How about efficient. the number of people that work in the office? The the number of people, you know, is, um, is, is hard right now. We had, we usually have we have two people in each area on our side of it the child support they have um, I think it's five over there and they all work together also but in our area we have two in real estate two in civil court and two in general sessions court right now we just have one in real estate because we lost a lady to another position um, so we need to get someone hired for that position because Do we need to oh, well, yes I mean because you we know, real to. estate has slowed down now. it has it has slowed down tremendously but there is still that need for real estate because that lady the, the one lady we have in there is by herself therefore she has no vacations she has no sick time she has nothing because of the fact that right like right now we have general sessions going on there's two out of our office right now in general sessions court so that leaves three down there working well, sometimes one of us have to be somewhere else. One of those girls in civil court will come up and take the place of one of the girls in criminal court. So that leaves two. So our office is short-staffed. So that means our, you know, the people of Greenwood County that come in, you know, we want to be able to service them as fast as we can, efficiently as we can. And nobody needs to wait on anything they need. So, you know, to be able to, to serve like we should and be efficient in that office, we need to have that person replaced. So at all times, you know, there's at least three people down in that office that can handle any area of that office. Now, now, what what is your job job title right at this moment in the office? I'm deputy clerk of court for General Sessions Court. And should you be lucky enough to become clerk of court, what will that mean as far as that job there? I still plan on maintaining my job in General Sessions Court. I I believe that the clerk needs to be in court. I believe that is an important. Um, position to be seen in court, to be active in court, to let the jury see you, see what you're doing. You know, I want, I want the people of Greenwood County to know who the clerk of court is. You know, I've had a few people say, well, I don't even know what the clerk is or, or who she is or what she does, you know, and I have taken, I've, I've educated a tremendous amount of people on our office that, that really they don't know. So, but I want to be able to be a hands-on clerk that, that maintains her job. I love my general sessions job. I love the people I work with, the judges I work with, the attorneys, solicitors. You know, I, and I don't want to give that up. And I see no reason that I, I need to give that up. You know, I can, main, as I'm doing now, I'm maintaining that general sessions and, you know, working what I can with the clerk in, in that position, you know, to, to learn more as, you know, as the year goes on. So... Well, you really have a big um, advantage with being able to work with Ingrid Moon right I do. now. I, I do. I do. That's a big, mm -hmm. big help. It is. And, you know, with working with Louise in the past, you know, and Louise Davis, you know, working with her and then stepping in with Ingram, you know, it, it's been a big advantage, you know, to learn different aspects of, of every everything in the office. But like I say, every day is something new that, that comes up in that office that, that we learn, that we handle, and... Something changes all the time. Laws change all the time. Yeah, they sure do. Yes. Hey, I'm Ann Eller. I'm here with Cassidy Sheik. It is time for South Carolina News. How about stay right with us? Got a question? Give us a call. 229-7984. That's 229-7984. Uh, are you a pirate or a pack rat? Do you have a vacation of a lifetime sitting in the attic? Or a college tuition hung on a wall? Or is a fabulous retirement hidden in your jewelry box? Bring those items to Sharp Facets Gallery. We can establish value and buy from you or sell for you. And so ends another chapter at Sharp Facets Gallery. 72 Bypass and on the web, sharpfacets.com. 
that's right. We're right back here at Sharp Facets Gallery on the 72 Bypass. We are talking to Chastity Sheik right now. She is, of course, running for Clerk of Court. And, of course, great that you were able to come out and see us today because you have general sessions in session right now or was it earlier today. So uh, that's a lot. And last week, with the week of the election, I know it affected a lot of people being able to get out and... Uh, and vote, but also all the people that were running that have to do with law enforcement. Right. It was tight for a lot of people. It was. But uh, 85 degrees right now in the Emerald City. What are we looking for tonight? We are looking for mainly clear skies, low of 64, and of course tomorrow it will be a high of 89, and then tomorrow night a low of 66. This is absolutely fabulous weather. And while I have a second here, how about let's just check how the price of gold fared at the end of the day today. It was up, it was down. What is it going to be saying now? I don't even know, folks, but you know you can come right here to Sharp Facets Gallery and get the best deals on gold. So what do we got right now? It is, well, this morning, it, uh, let's see, what do we got here? How did it finish up here at the end of the day? Checking it out as we speak. You know, we'll be posting this video and audio on our website. That's right. You can go to annsentertainmentvision.com and check it out. Right now, gold it looks like it's closed out. $1,628. Gold went up today. That's a very good thing. If you've got it to sell and you need to sell, come see us right here at Sharp Facets Gallery. But uh, we're talking with Chastity here, and of course, uh, do you, how long have you actually worked in that office now? Thirteen years. Thirteen years. Thirteen years. August the 9th will be thirteen years. Let me make exact. August 9th nice. will be thirteen years. You plan to make it that long? I plan to make it that long. <laughs> Lord right. willing, I plan to make it that long. <laughs> now, um, as far as... Uh, as all of the experience and everything that you uh, you have intended, when, when this opportunity to run for clerk of court came came up, when Ingram said she was going to be retiring, you of course I guess said got to do it, right? Oh yes, yes, I had no doubt, no right. doubt. And this is something that you uh, very much would treasure, I presume, if oh, you I got would. this job. I would. I find it to be very important. I, I find it that you know it'd be an opportunity to to work for the people of Greenwood County and, and just be very proud. I would be very proud to be able to, to be the Greenwood County Clerk of Court. Sure. You know, and you know, one of the things we talked about, I guess, about the only thing that you wouldn't have all the experience to do would be stepping up to that management job there, right? Mm -hmm. Because uh, you have worked with, with uh, all the people that in that mm -hmm. office, so there would be a little bit of a change. There would be a little bit of a change, you know, to view, view it diff you know, differently. How have, how have, uh, how are, how supportive are the other uh, people that work in the clerk's office? Oh, they're very supportive, very supportive. You know, they're, we're all great friends. You know, we work well together, and and they're they're very supportive. Have been there, you know, through everything that I've gone to. Will be with me tonight at the meetings. You know, I, I say I'm, I'm I don't want to speak for all of them because there are certain ones that uh, on the family court side or whatever that you know that are not. I'm not going to say not for me, not supporting me, but they're just, they just like to, to keep quiet, say their own self, you know, which is fine. That's fine. But I have others, you know, five or six others that are, are with me everywhere I go and are very supportive, have been just the, the rock for me. They really have. That has to make you feel good. It does. It does. To know that, you know, they want me to be there, they want me to be their supervisor, as you'd say, or, or you know, management position, you know, that it does. It makes me feel very good. It makes me want to work even harder, you know, for them. Sure. Now, running for office, what have you learned through running through office here? I mean, you know, at, you've never run for any office before. What, no, what, have you thought, what, what have you thought about this whole experience, shall we say, this journey? Let's call it a journey. That's what everybody calls it today. It is, it, mm -hmm. I would say it's a journey. Um, I have learned that there are some very cruel, mean-spirited people in the world. Um, I guess I'd like to think that I, everybody's happy and you know, loves everybody like I do and has the attitude, but they're not. And that's been a hard lesson. It's been a hard lesson. They, you know, they say you find out who your friends are, and that has definitely been the case. You find out who your friends are. You find out what people really think about you, and, you know, it, it, it can make you question yourself sometimes. But, you know, you have to know at the end of the day that, that I am who I am, and I'm proud of, of who I am. It takes a lot of personal courage to it do that. It takes a lot of personal courage that I didn't realize 
at first and you know that I, I've grown from it. I've definitely grown to a better person for it. You know, it has brought me down to my lowest that I have been, but it has also brought me to the highest that I've been for the, the people that do support me and, and want to see me in that position. So it, it has its ups and its downs, but the majority of it has been a very positive experience. I'm very proud to say that I've done this whichever way it turns out. I will not regret anything that I have done, any actions I've taken. You know, I'm very proud of the, the race that I've, I've ran. And, you know, that, that's all I can say about that. I can, now, how do your kids feel about this? They're ready for it to be over. <laughs> they're ready for it to yes, be over. Yes. yes, my children were um, this weekend. I, I was sitting down looking at the numbers, you know, the precincts. And my little girl wanted me to sit on the couch with her. And I sat down as I picked up, as I was sitting down, I picked up the paper. She said, no, Mommy, please don't look at it. Please let's don't talk about votes or anything with the campaign, please. And it hit me so hard then that I have engulfed myself in this. And it's time to, to step back, you know. My children are the main thing, and they're important. You know, right. this job... It's very important, but this job is a job, you know, but what is important to me are my children and my family, you Absolutely. know, and they come first, and so it's, it, it, it hit me, it hit home this weekend, yeah. how engulfed it, this has changed me, how it's taken over. So, so I guess after next Tuesday, though, so we have one more week of this, really, one yes. more week, and then it'll be over, then you'll be able to take a little uh, personal time, however it works out, you'll be able to take a little That's personal right. time, step back, and... If you should be the uh, nominee, then uh, you will uh, crank it up, I guess. Uh, That's right. We'll get right back into it first of October and carry uh, through. Carry through. Run hard as we can. That's right. So, uh, well, uh, Chastity, I, I know that one of the things that uh, came out that was a little questionable was the thing about the realtors. Yes, yes. That was um, something that was not intended by any means. You know, I, I never intended to mislead anyone by that. When I received that letter in the mail, you know, I immediately posted it on my website because I was proud of it. I was proud for the fact that they met with me, that I was the only candidate that even agreed to meet with them. I enjoyed meeting with them. We, we, um, we had a really good session because they knew very little about the, the clerk's office. They knew the real estate area of the clerk's office because, of course, that's what realtors do. Sure. So I was proud to educate them on the rest of the area. So when I received that, you know, that I was very proud of it and I wanted it to be on my website. But, you know, as far as saying endorse, using that word, or, you know, it was never intended to, to be used as trying to deceive anyone. You know, I, I wish I could say I, I, I should have used it as qualified, but to me that just, just didn't, you know, <laughs> make sense. It sure. just didn't register, you know. But by no means was that an intentional saying I, you know, was endorsed by something I was not. I've spoken with Susan Long. I've spoken, you know, um, with others and you know explain that and apologize by any misleading and and I, I think there's no problem there's no hard feelings I mean this you, know, you, you can know, read the letter you can I, read the letter my, yourself on, on my website and could could have the whole time you know sure. like I said the day I received it I immediately got it on there along with the clerk's letters of endorsement that I do have <laughs> that is no question about the, the, four, the three the two former clerks and current clerk that I do have their endorsement that is no question but I have moved that letter to a place on my web page that is now named Qualified, not Endorsed. <laughs> qualified, there yes. you go. Because I, right. I, don't, I don't want to mislead anyone and, and make it look like that I was trying to be decept deceptive by any means. Sure. Now, your website is, if somebody wants to go check out your website? It's chastityforclerk.com. And is it four as a number? No, it's four, four spelled out, F-O-R. F-O-R, yes, okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can, of course, check out your website. Now, if anybody has questions for you, Chastity, where would they, uh, can they call you? Or they can call me, and on that website is also a place where you, it says contact Chastity. You can email me. You just, just click that. It goes straight to email. gives you a little box to type up anything you want to ask, and it comes straight to me. I've had a few of those. I've had a few, you know, supporters just giving me a, a good little pep talk every now and then, and that's been very nice to receive those. But anybody can. And what about anything? a telephone number if they want to call I you? I can give you my cell number. It's 864, of course, 323-4115. Okay, three two three four one one five. If you yes. have a question, give yes. me a call. Just give me a call. I'll be glad to answer it and help you any any way I can. Absolutely. Well, when we come back, we're going to uh, talk some more with Chastity. It's, it is four forty six in the afternoon, so uh, let's hear a quick word from our sponsors. When we come back, we'll talk some more with Chastity. Hey, you got a question? Something you don't understand? Something that's bugging you out there? Give us a call two two nine seven nine eight four. That's two two nine seven nine eight four. You know, Chastity. One of the uh, questions that we that has actually come in 
is what exactly that clerk of court does. I mean, you know, I think everybody knows their little box part that they deal with. Maybe they deal with the child support and maybe they deal with the real estate. Maybe they've had uh, run-ins with the law and have something to say about that. But what exactly does the uh, clerk of court do overall? Our whole office encompasses the real estate area, which handles mortgages, deeds, UCCs, you know, anything to do with real estate. Um, if you're going to sell a house, buy a house, you know, they have to do a search on the house, or a property search. We have to make sure all the deeds and mortgages are maintained properly or filed properly to, you know, to find those, those areas to have a clear title. We handle civil court, which is, you know, our um, common pleas area. They have lawsuits, malpractice suits, um, slip and fall, you know, uh, wrecks. They handle all that area. Then we have our general sessions court, which is our criminal division. That is. Um, crimes that are that are moved above magistrate court and municipal court. They're the now, what crimes. exactly do you end up filing on criminal court? We have warrants. We have the warrants that are actually served on the defendant, signed. You know, we we, ha we keep those. If they're they've been bonded out, we have all bond paperwork, all motions made by attorneys, the trial motions, Brady motions. Um, we have any public defender applications. If you're they're applying for the public defender, we do that with them. We go to the application. We you know apply help them apply for that. We get that information to the public defender's office. We have to take all our files up to court and we have a court term and we're up in the courtroom with our warrants and we, you know, work through the sentencing sheets. We give the judge what he needs. I mean, it, it just goes on and on and on the process that it goes through. We go through probation. You know, we have to get them sent to the probation office, get them signed up for probation. Now, they, the probation office handles that part, signing them up. But um, we have to give them the information they need to get that started. I mean, it's just a continuous process. So one of the big issues is keeping all that paperwork straight. Yes, it's a tremendous amount of responsibility as far as original documents that are kept in that office that we have to maintain in, in a certain file, in a certain order. You know, um, criminal warrants are given indictment numbers. When the grand jury meets once a month, they're, they're indicted a certain amount of cases that the solicitor puts in front of them. Well, once they have an indictment number, that number six with them from here on out. And that file has to maintain the warrants, the sentence sheets, the indictments, any paperwork that goes with that file. It has to be main, maintained within that number. And it's so far with the common pleas area. It's given a, C, a CP number. Once it's clocked in, then immediately it's given a number, and it will have that number from here on out. So it's very important, you know, to know what you're doing, to clock those documents, to put the documents in the right files with the right numbers and the correct information. People are in there all the time searching, you know, searching through files. So um, now what kind of a reputation does the clerk, does the office have? We have a wonderful reputation. I have people every day tell me that, you know, we are one of the best in the state. And I hear that from title searchers who do not live in Greenwood, but they are in different clerk's offices every day. And, you know, and they tell me, they've told Ingram plenty of times. Of course, with Ingram being the clerk, they'll go to her and let her know how much they appreciate how organized we are, how, you know, we, we're, everything's accessible. Everything can, you know, you can get to anything you need in that office. It's not cluttered. It's organized. And, you know, I have had plenty in Ingram also that we are the best in the state. We have local attorneys that, you know, they, they wouldn't know what to do if, <laughs> if something changed drastically in that office. It's been that way, and they know it. And, and they love it. They love our office. You know, they they speak very highly of us to anyone they they come in contact with. So it's very it's something to be very proud of, very sure. proud of, and that I hope we can continue that. Now, the people that work there have they been there for a long time? Basically, I'm not. Basically, saying. yes. Um, you know, I have. There's one in let's see that's been there I think ten years, and one the lady that works with me she's been there seven, and then we have one in Common Pleas that's been there right at six, and one. Um, probably two to, two to three years. I can't remember. So, so you don't have a lot of turnover. No, we do not have a lot of turnover at all. You know, once you get there, you usually pretty much stay. Pretty much stay. All right. Well, that is good to hear about that. Uh, we have talked about just the fact of uh, you, you, the biggest um, area that would be something you need to learn more about just because you haven't worked in that is the... Uh, the child uh, child support and that side mm -hmm. of it. Does actually have the doors locked between the two sides? No, you would think so, the way we talk about it sometimes, because we prefer to the other side. Right. It, is, it is on the other side of the wall, but there is a door, it's right. a regular door, that you can go through to get to that side. So it's not the whole, you know, a whole universe away by any means. But it is separated, because we have our job we have to do and focus on, and we don't have time to go mingle on that side, nor do they have time to come mingle on our side. You know, we, 
we all get together and eat, you know, when we can at Christmas and things like that. It's not like we don't see each other, but some days we don't see each other during the day. You know, we're busy, they're busy constantly with family court, child support payments, and, you know, they have a job to do. That's what they're there for. That's what we're all there for is to to do the job that we have to do and, and do it properly and efficiently. We're not there to socialize and, you know, have a good time with each other and see what you did over the weekend. You know, yeah, we have time to talk and like every office does, but mainly we're there to do a job and, and to get that do- that job done. Well, I know you are you're excited that you have a, coming up now, a week from tomorrow will be the final uh, primary runoff election. It is, there's very few across the straight state, very mm-hmm. few. There are some, but there are very few, and of course they all will be next, next Tuesday, the 26th, so by four, uh, Actually, probably that night at 7.05, all the votes would know. I'm just kidding, you know. <laughs> Have you ever seen anything on all these elections, on these big elections where we've had for primaries for president and everything, that they're able to predict the winner yes. at five minutes yes, after, the ra- after the polls mm-hmm. closed? And it wasn't that way here. Mm-mm. No. No, 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 <laughs> no, not at all. It's, 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 a, it's a neat experience, though, to, to sit and watch those numbers come in, you know. It's, it's something else. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's great. So how is Lance felt about this, your husband, Lance Sheet, the uh, attorney here in Greenwood? He, he's very supportive. He is. He's wonderful. You know, I, he gets to be the, the beating post, I guess. You know, I get to come home and, and, and beat on him. and, and The whipping post. The whipping post, the I should say. Post. Yes. Let's go with the whipping Let's post. Let's go with that. That's the third choice of words. <laughs> um, so, you know, but he, he's he's wonderful, you know, and the, all the kids have been, been great. You know, he's been hard on the family, but... But they all support me, and he supports me, and, you know, he's doing all he can for me, and I appreciate everything he's done. Every night he's been out to midnight, putting out signs, straightening up signs, weeding around signs so the grass won't grow up, you know. You know, just little things like that little that you don't think you don't about. Think about. Mm-hmm. You don't think about it. You need to go weed it around that sign, you know, and he's out there with weed in his truck, you know, just <laughs> taking care of it, so... He's been wonderful. All right. And basically, I want to give you uh, the last couple of minutes here to tell people why in this runoff election you are the best choice for this job. Well, I appreciate that, and I do feel like I am the best best choice. I feel like I am the most qualified. Um, I feel like I know the office. I've, I've been in the office long enough to know everything about the office. Um, I will have no learning curve. Um, to come in to, you know, as if I say, you know, the family court and child support area, I want to learn more about that just so I can make that a better area. I want to improve on everything that I can improve on. But, you know, just, just like I say, having the experience to be able to walk in that first day and, and nothing stops, nothing changes. We maintain it like we did the day before, the, you know, like Ingram Moon's last day. The next day will be a fresh new start for me, and but it'll go right on. You know, there's no time to stand there in the office and say, well, where do I go? What do I do? What area is this? What is this? You know, it's just, you can't do that in that office. You have to hit the door running and, and keep things going. There's no, no lag time. Things have to be clocked. Things have to be done in order, and, and that's very important, and I want people to think about that and realize, you know, the experience, the qualification is what, what is needed in the clerk's job. Absolutely. Now you talk about clocking things in and they have to go in a certain order. What do you mean by that? We have a time stamp, a time clock. And anything that comes in general sessions area, warrants, motions, anything, um, and in the common pleas area, it is clocked in. And our real estate area is also, everything that we bring in that office is clocked in. So that way we have a, a time, a date to know this was clocked at this time. So if, it come up in court. if something wasn't picked up and clocked in, what, what could happen? It, well, you know, it could, it could affect a court case. You know, if they're in civil court and they needed that summons and complaint to see, when, to see when it was served, you know, when it was clocked in or whatever, and that clock stands right on there, well, that can cause a problem because you don't know. You have no guarantee to tell the judge, well, it was, this, it was done this day at this time. There, there's no answer for that, and there's no excuse for that. I mean, you know, the, that's how important things are in this office to be clocked in to when they're referred to in a court case, then we've got it. You know, we know when we took that document in. We know where it's at. We know it's the original document. You know, it's, it's very important. So anybody really that's dealt with a mortgage, anybody that's that's been in civil or in criminal court, these are very time-sensitive things they that are you deal with. Very time-sensitive. So, very time. Uh, if a deed is recorded before the, the mortgage, and you know, that causes a problem. Our attorneys will tell us, I need this recorded first, then this recording. Well, if that gets switched, that can throw a whole more, you know, real estate deal out the window. I mean, it's, it's very important. It trickles down all the way, you know, to the sale of a home. 
Absolutely. Yeah, it's very important. So that comes right up next to it. Well, Chastin, I know you're looking forward to next Tuesday. I, I know you've got a big week planned as, as you get out there and see all the people that you can. And I certainly appreciate you, and I know our listeners appreciate you coming by and sitting down and talking with us again. Well, I sure do appreciate it. I really enjoy doing this. Thank mm -hmm. you. Well, thank you very much, Chastity. This is WCRS right here in Greenwood. Happy hours coming up. Salute. I'll be back.